Last year, the Hawks swooping on a drug trafficking operation from a luxury estate in Belito, that's just north of Durban. Here's the story. Inside one of the houses, officers from the Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation found an estimated 3.9 tons of methaqualine, a powder also known as Mandrax, among other drugs. I want to ask the question this afternoon, how big a problem is Mandrax? We know about it, but is there a real economy in this? I'm joined now by Richard Chellen from the Institute of Security Studies, who has uh, written extensively on the issue. First of all, m maybe just by way of context, and good afternoon to you, Richard, give us a sense of exactly what the drug is, and uh, is it easy to make? Uh, good afternoon, Jeremy, and good afternoon to uh, the viewers at home as well. Um, well, uh, Let's go straight into it. Um, actually, it's, it's a drug that's been around for a very couple of, I mean, it's been there for more than five, uh, six decades. I mean, it, it first uh, came onto the market in 1951. It was synthesized um, and used medically in the treatment of sleep and insomnia issues. That's predominantly due to the fact that it was a, designed as a central nervous system depressant, right? So, and in the 60s and 70s, um, the drug was commonly marketed as Qualude and in some places Mandrax, which is the pharmaceutical name which has remained in, in, in South Africa. Um, just um, as soon as it was produced, it, it, its market, it became, it had a footprint in South Africa. It became a, pretty, a big market in South Africa in terms of in Mandrax. Um, but at that time, um, the UN started, uh, the UN uh, the drug control started to realize that it's becoming a problem because people are using it for recreational use rather than uh, medical or medicinal use. Mm. So it uh, was listed on this Schedule Two, which eventually led to its banning and, and uh, becoming illegal in many parts of the world. So um, it, it's quite, it has an old history, and even in South Africa, it has an old history which has been uh, continuous, I would say, until we find it until the present day. The reason why I wanted to talk to you was that figure of 3.9 tons. So how is it sold and trafficked, and what is the scale or the size of, of the market or the economy in this particular drug? Well, um, there's no actual figure on it, but it, it's quite a big uh, market, and uh, um, it's it's... Not as big. In South Africa, we have various drug markets which, which make bigger profits from it, um, like your heroin, um, your met methamphetamines, etc. cetera. Um, but Mandrax, um, as, you, as later on I, I noted, is that it, it, it's, it's one way where traffickers and, and dealers can, can break into the, the market and, and make lucrative profit out of it. It's not as big. The market is not as big as your meth or heroin. But nonetheless, it provides quite a lucrative uh, market. Unfortunately, um, there's no estimate figure on, mm. on what it's, you know, what the cost is or what the market is worth present. Manufactured in this country, is it also exported? Um, according to the UN, uh, it's predominantly a consumer market. Uh, South Africa is the biggest consumer market in the world for Mandrax. Um, but also there's been uh, instances where the drug has been produced uh, here uh, and, and shipped to other countries in, in Africa and, and, and globally. Again, back to that uh, investigation from the Directorate for Priority Crime, 3.9 tons of uh, Mandrax. Um, how well policed is it? Um, so, so one of the main issues is it's not the drug itself, it's the precursor which are used, and we're seeing, uh, predominantly seeing, I mean, usually you will see seizures at, at border posts or seizures in, in, in harbors where uh, pills and tablets are, are being uh, seized and confiscated. But now, um, drug traffickers and, and drug dealers have, have gone around that. You know, criminal markets have, and criminal groups have tried to go around that by importing the, the precursors to the chemicals and manufacturing it itself within the country. So it becomes more difficult for law enforcement to yeah. actually um, seize it or come across it, especially if there's no awareness. But however, we've seen that from the previous work and various seizures of the police, that they are, uh, the awareness is growing and they're well conversed in, in what uh, the precursors of uh, methacolone looks like. And, but uh, obviously there are some various issues that still allow some of these products to come through. Thank you for your time, Richard Chellen from the Institute for Security Studies.